Good morning, sisters, friends, family, and to especially the crumbling Pac-12 conference <laughs> that chose an early football game for us today. I'm Jacqueline Ross. I'm the Collegiate Management Advisor, which basically means I'm in charge, or at least nobody has tried to stop me. I'm thrilled that all of my annoying Facebook posts, emails, and invite bright notifications made their way to each of you. Thank you to all the members and volunteers, especially Madison Maka, Karen Green, Caroline, Cam, the whole crew, um, to help throw us on this event. I'm really glad we're all to get together and celebrate this house where we all grew up. At least, this is where I grew up. I still remember when I walked by this house in the summer before I joined. I was 18, graduated from high school, and just wanted my pain to stop. The pain of loneliness, the cancer of heartbreak, and desperately looking for a place I could oop, figure out who I really was. I wanted to belong, I wanted to feel loved, and I wanted to feel like I mattered. I don't know why you joined a sorority, but that's my real answer. My cover story is that my sisters were in other sororities on campus, and when I told them my start date at OSU, they told me I could be president. And from my attire, you can tell that prophecy came true. <laughs> I didn't have any real friends in high school, and nobody knew who I really was. I burned a lot of bridges, and I wanted a fresh start at who I knew I could really become. But I knew what I wanted in order to change that. I wanted a group of friends who cared about me as much as I did about them, who would stick around through the hard times, accept change within themselves, and have fun along the way. That's what I found in Sigma Kappa, those four values. Service, friendship, personal growth, and loyalty. Friends who care, who work hard, and stay through the hard times in order to get to the joyous ones. That's what Sigma Kappa gave me. And those friends, my sisters, have changed me into someone 18-year-old me couldn't even fathom. They loved me just as I was, on my good days and my bad days. They encouraged me to be a leader, to share my personality, and they supported my first real years of me being a joyful, happy me, which made me a better friend, and daughter, and student, and employee, and now wife, and homeowner. And overall, they gave me the space where I could become the best version of myself, that I am more than enough, and that, that is the true light of Sigma Kappa. To the current members, this event is just as much for us alums as it is for you. What I mean by that is look around. This works. Look around at the friendships, new and old, and see how these women have stuck around. That saying, that saying that will always make my skin crawl. It's not four years, it's four life. Four life. But it's true. My friends, and you guys know I must give you a shout out. We love our friend group so much that when I suggested we do a sisterhood of the traveling pants style game for the rest of our lives, they were all in. For the last three years, every two months, one person oversees something for our group to keep us connected. I never wanted to catch up. I always wanted to be caught up in their lives. You can't just walk down the hall, get dinner downstairs, or run into them on campus. Friendships are hard as you get older. You live time zones away, have crazy work schedules, and life just compounds as time speeds up. We share Zoom Bob Ross painting nights, spooky 5K walks, and a fun weekend in Denver. We haven't lost touch. When we talk about when we live together in the house, especially the best sleep in your life in the sleeping porch, all the time. These really are the best years of your life because it's the first time you get to be surrounded by people who love the version of you who you want to be. And the best part is that it doesn't have to end. They will pick up the phone, they will text you every day, they will send you pick-me-up baskets when life gets hard. They will be at your graduations and at your wedding. They will continue to be there for you as you grow up because you do not stop growing up at college graduation. And it feels so good to share your whole life with people who love you completely. Society say that sororities are just where you buy your friends, and honestly, I kind of have to agree with them. 
but I have made my money back and then some, and now I just get the dividends, and to me, my friends and who I became are priceless. To my fellow alum, this event is to prove that you were right. Whoever you wanted to become here was so good that it's still working. You held the way, you did your part, and now you can know and validate your own young, naive, innocent, 18, 20 year old self that who you became here matters and still matters to this day, all those years later. The friends you made, the chapter you helped make better, the person you became still matters. A bit of your light is still shining and lighting the way for other young women too. And with that, I need to tell you that this group of women in 2023, they are the best of us. I'll be honest, I just <laughs> flipped a UE right out of my collegiate days and started advising. I love, I love helping with sisterhoods and discussing philanthropy ideas and getting through standards meetings. Um, I love traveling to regional and national conferences. I love the meetings and phone calls and text message and just the process behind the machine because I love helping other young women find their light too. These women, they're different. I've been to enough Sigma Kappa trainings, workshops, round tables as a member, as a facilitator, as an advisor on every topic under the sorority sun and I know in my heart that they are the best. They crush recruitment, they retain members, they win philanthropies, they raise the most money we've ever raised. They advocate for themselves. They're hilarious, they're smart, they're genuine. They admit when they're wrong. They're trying their best, even with the world against them. They represent us so well. This is the time the light of Sigma Kappa has ever been its brightest. In 2016, Upsilon was the first chapter to graduate from the Specialized Chapter Program, which means we stopped receiving direct national support in all operations. It basically means we almost failed as a chapter and NHQ had to come in and revive us. We had come a long way to become a stable chapter, let alone a successful one. But in 2019, we won our first One Star Award which was top 15%. And then we won another one in 2020, and another one in 2021, and we won a two-star award, top 10% last year. We won best philanthropy last year across all Sigma Kappas, and this year we raised even more money than last year. On average, we meet quota plus them every primary recruitment for the last seven years. The high character of these women, if there is gonna be one year of Upsilon, Waiting it all, the Founders Award, next year in the 150th National Convention in Boston, it's going to be this year. But the thing that brings us all together, all our memories and experiences and stories, might be the thing that sinks this chapter. The chapter has suffered since COVID, and for some of you recent alums, we were debt-free going into the pandemic. With average new member classes, in, classes averaging 40 to 50 pre-COVID to now barely breaking 20 members, it's not sustainable. The chapter is currently in $104,000 of debt from the Sigma Kappa Homes program, who manages the physical chapter house. With Oregon State's mandatory first year live-in requirement and recruitment not beginning until after classes start, that means the sophomore and junior classes do not cover all the beds in this house. Capacity is at 52, and with 20 me members per classes, that leaves about 10 empty bed fees every year. One empty bed fee is $2,100 per term. And let's say there's about 10 empty bed fees. The chapter will rack up $63,000 every year forcing seniors to spend their entire collegiate experience in the dorms or in the house, which shrinks the senior class, reducing our alumni size, and then places more pressure on current members to pay the bills who already paid their platform. For context, there are only nine seniors and 10 live-out members. The live-outs have already lived in there two years and cannot split those empty bed fees, let alone dig the chapter out. But 
There are some solutions to alleviate the pain. There are three remedies to get our girls to first place in Boston. One, we need to lower the bed count. There are volunteer boards and email lists where we need to have a louder voice on the national homes team that this campus cannot support this large of a house. We need to slash the budget. We can't increase current bed fees for livings moving forward because we are already the most expensive chapter on campus. For my primary recruitment just this year, there's only 200 PNMs signed up. And with 11 pandemic stories, with NPH setting quoted to biggest house plus 20, the next class is still looking to be about 25 if everyone completes the process. We have to lower the bed count. Two, we need homes to continue with the plan to make this 100-year-old creaky house ADA compliant. We are on track, and with this, we can have freshmen, new members, move in winter and spring term to help reduce empty bed fees throughout the year. Three, we need to bail them out. This is not at the fault of the collegiates. They are the ones who did believe in us when we recruited them. They wanted to be a smack kappa who live in our home. They're the ones who want to keep the light shining. And they are the ones who are being punished. The pool of them is just not that big. And from empty, uh, from COVID's empty bed fees, the chapter has $93,000 of past debt. And with five empty bed fees this year, they will add $11,000 each term. They have been paying $10,000 a term to clear it, but it's not enough to go back in time. We currently have raised almost $18,000 towards the debt, but we need to help them go all the way to the 104,000. Hopefully by filling those five spots, winter and spring term, they could probably manage a few empty bed fees for one term, but that's only if they have no debt. They'll never get out of this hole and seeing that the Alpha Phi chapter down in Eugene lost their house this year, it's not something that is out of the realm of possibilities. We are the eighth oldest active Sigma Kappa chapter and second oldest active chapter house still standing. This house was built in 1923 for Sigma Kappas and only Sigma Kappas have lived here since. But this is not just a house on a college street. This is where our light began, where we ran home on bid day from the MU and got bigs and littles and went to dances and had Monday night dinner in the dining room. And we laid in the yard in the spring and pranked each other in our rooms during dry period. Where the boys across the street shaped the fire escape at midnight. Where we had sing practice and chapter meetings in the basement. Where we became the best version of ourselves for the first time and then made the best of friends along the way. It's this amazing little world that I would be so beaver damned if a, it became a boring co-op or bulldoze into a lifeless townhouse. To my collegiates, my girls, I want you all to know that whether today we don't raise one more dollar, that I believe in each of you, I still believe you'll get the gold in Boston, that this last term of 2023 will be your best. The real gold is that you get to be with your friends and work hard towards something bigger than yourself, selflessly, and for the betterment of each other. That's what we did when we were all here. Sigma Kappa promises a lifetime of friendship for each of you. You're all just winners by, just by being who you are, and that is no, more than enough for me, and everyone else thinks so too. I really wanted to put on this amazing event to celebrate the sisterhood and the amazing women it creates. It's to prove a point that all Sigma Kappas will serve one another in hard times so we can celebrate the joyous ones together because that's what real friends do. I also wanted to put up a white flag. The other advisors and I can't solve this issue on our own and our sisters need our help. When I first started advising a few years ago, I gave a two hour presentation to the chapter about how to become the flagship Sigma Kappa, how to win the Founders Award, and they have followed the plan. They are almost there. But to bring home the gold, the entire sisterhood needs to show up. If any place can make that miracle happen, 
If any place can bring me my lifelong friends, if any place can make me who I am today, it's here in Upsilon. I will be around with the finance advisor, Katie, who is also one of my best friends, and that's just rid of the pants group, for questions for those of you who want to help carry the burden or at least pass along the message of our white flag. It's been a hundred wonderful years at the 231, and I wrote this little poem for her. Here's to Oopswan, a century strong in a house where sisterhood belongs. For a hundred years, you've stood the test. In this sorority home, you became your best. Through laughter, tears, and countless nights, you shared your dreams and reached new heights. In this centennial house, you made your mark, leaving a legacy that lights up the dark. With bonds that time can never sever, Sigma Kappa, you'll live on forever. So here's to 100 years of grace in this cherished, historic, special place. Raise your glasses high. Let's all say a cheers to Sigma Kappa's 100-year career. May the next 100 be just as grand in this sorority house forever you'll stand. <laughs>